Welcome to part three of the coilover install for my 99 or 93 uh, Chevy Corvette. And what I'm going to be going over today is motion ratio, um, specifically shock motion ratio, which is the ratio of how much the shock moves in reference to uh, the wheel, essentially. And this is going to help determine kind of what suspension setup I want to run, whether something like sway bars are really necessary or if I'm better off running a stiffer spring and no sway bars or am I better off running uh, a really soft spring and, um, you know, a sturdier sway bar or higher spring rate sway bar. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. This won't apply to everyone. This is only really going to apply if you're really going to dig into the suspension. Um, you need things like roll center uh, height as well as uh, center of gravity height, corner weights, um, sway bar motion ratios. Uh, thankfully, uh, for the C4 Corvette, I was able to find most of that online. In fact, the only thing that I wasn't able to find that was uh, at least kind of seemed like, ah, that might not be right is the shock motion ratio, which is why I'm doing that. Um, obviously something like sway bar ratio, that's something you can fairly easy find. Um, I kind of messed up my sway bar mounts, so I'm going to use the numbers that uh, I was able to find. Um, they're pretty consistent with what you kind of expect for sway bar ratios. Uh, center of gravity, height, uh, that was, you know, I was able to find with quite a few people referencing that number or right around that number. Uh, same with the roll center height. The corner weights, uh, I obviously can't weigh the car with no wheels on it and being up in the air, and I really don't want to put it back down on the ground. Um, so corner weights, I was able to find a couple different numbers. We kind of averaged that um, to apply into our calculations. And it's also something that I can um, kind of adjust for after the fact. Um, Especially since I've got a, a pretty stock car and that those were the weights we were able to find or not a pretty stock car It's bone stock um, Except for the stuff that I'm doing to it now So all that should be pretty reliable information um, As far as using the shock motion ratio uh, that will be covered in part four when we're dyno tuning the Viking Crusader shocks that I have um, but for now, let me show you how to find your shock motion ratio and uh, then yeah, I guess look for part five. So to find your shock motion ratio, you are essentially going to have to measure two points. You're going to measure the distance your shock moves and the distance your wheel or obviously something your wheel is attached to kind of after the shock. Um, so as you can see here on the front shock, I've got a piece of tape there. I'm going to measure that distance, um, and I'll I'll go over all these dimensions um, after I get done set up. Um, I'm going to just do a time lapse for you guys to kind of see um, what I'm doing. But essentially, you'll measure that distance, and I'm going to move the shock that exact distance by essentially jacking up on the arm and uh, I sorry before I jack up the arm what I'm gonna do to try and just make sure I'm being at least a little bit accurate I don't have the wheel there so I don't have a wheel center line but it's gonna be somewhere kind of in this area um, so I'm going to measure starting distances from here down to the floor and like from here down to the floor so off the brake caliper mount and off the toe arm mount I'm going to measure what that distance is to the ground jack the shock up to where that blue tape is painter's tape not a crosser's friend and uh, so I'll jack it up to where that blue pa uh, painter's tape is and then I'm going to remeasure those points and then you're essentially going to use the difference between these points you know from where it started to where it ended and compare that with where it started and where it ended on the shock 
if that makes sense. So that's that's how I'm doing the front. Um, I don't have quite the re I don't have the rear quite set up yet. I've got to set my points for measurement on there on the rear. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to measure the wheel on the back yet. I'll have to figure that out as I'm going through. But what I'm planning on doing for the shock, you'll notice on the front shock, uh, the sleeve that was on there, I'd taken that off just so I can get a good measurement. That sleeve was really loose. This sleeve is tightly in place. So actually what I'm planning on doing, you can kind of see where that sleeve starts, is I'm going to jack this up. And I'm going to do like an inch and a half or two inches or so. Um, and I'm going to make a mark of where that is. Set it back down, which I'll have to mark this first, obviously, to measure out that two inches. Set it back down, and then I'm going to jack up that, sh jack up this rear end until that shock. Um, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to mark it down here. I'm thinking wrong. So I'll mark it down here about two inches from the start of this. And once it gets to that two inch mark, that's when I know I've reached my spot and I will take a measurement off of here. And again, do the same thing. I'll have to measure a starting point And then as I jack it up, once I get to that point, that stopping point, I'll measure that stopping point, compare this, the starting and stopping point distance, um, subtract that and compare it with the two inches on the rear shock. So that essentially is showing you your shock is moving X and your wheel is only moving Y. And then that's kind of your, um, well, not kind of, that is your shock motion ratio. Um, so that, again, that's used to kind of determine what kind of spring setup you want in your shocks or um, in your suspension. And uh, yeah, I'll go over, we'll go over it a lot more um, tomorrow actually, but the video won't be out tomorrow. Um, when we're doing the shock dyno testing is it'll kind of be a little bit more relevant there. Um, and I've got a lot more data there, I guess, um, to show you guys. So it'll make a little bit more sense as far as what we're doing with these numbers, but this is basically a video to show you how to find those numbers. So I'll get the camera set up and uh, start measuring. All right, so just got done uh, doing the measurements, or I guess I just got done doing the calculations on the measurements. You guys saw me taking the measurements. So what I found, uh, so the shock distance on the front, let me change the view. Here. Okay, so the shock distance on the front, um, that would be from the top of the shock here to that blue tape uh, was 0.9375 inches, or 5 sixteenths. Um, the distance that the caliper, center of the caliper mount, um, and again, this is kind of by eyeball. So this is why I took two measurements on the front. I had two places I could easily get to. I didn't have two places I could easily get to and have what I would consider a decent measurement. But the distance the caliper mount traveled was 1.25 inches. And the distance the toe arm traveled was 1.625 inches, and that's an average of 1.4. Um, so these are on a different plane, I guess you could say. Um, so that could have been part of the reason the measurements are different. Um, and anyway, so you do 0.375 over that 1.4, and your ratio is 0.67 inches. So that means for every inch that the wheel 
is moving, your shock is going to move 0.67 inches. That's the front motion ratio, or front shock motion ratio, I should say. Um, and now we'll go to the rear. And on the rear here, the distance that the shock moved, I'm trying to get to, hopefully you guys can see it. So from, or I guess the shock distance, yeah, what the shock moved from this little top hat here down to the middle of this uh, silver Sharpie mark, underrated Sharpie color. That was 1.375 inches, or one and three eighths of an inch. And then I did the measurement. Again, there's not great places here, so I'm gonna try and shine some light because it's and essentially let's see there we go essentially I was measuring to the top edge I'm trying to see if I can get a better view zoom out the camera yeah that that top edge right here um So you can kind of see, you kind of got a decent spot to measure. Um, wouldn't say it's perfect, but found that to be um, the distance that that traveled was 1.75 inches. So you got 1.375 divided by 1.75, and your motion ratio is 0.79. So again, for every inch that wheel travels, you're going to get um, 0.79 inches of travel in the rear. So that's how you find your motion ratio uh, or shock motion ratio. Um, one little I guess, side note I'd say is uh, for the rear, I didn't actually disconnect the sway bars you guys saw in the previous videos. Um, that uh, adds a little tension, makes it a little bit harder for that jack to... to move the wheel up and down. So I would definitely recommend uh, disconnecting that sway bar. It's not a big issue. It didn't affect the measurements at all. Um, and the jack was still able to push it up. But if you wanna just make things a little bit smoother, go ahead and disconnect that. Um, but that's motion ratio. Next video, we're showing you how to use that motion ratio along with the shock testing. Um, but that's it for now. So. Please like and subscribe if you can, and until next time, keep it shiny side up.